In episode 7, Johnny returns after burying his friend, heads into his office to find that Kreese has organized everything, and even managed to put up a picture of himself, making himself really feel at home. And Johnny's not too thrilled about it, but he kind of just puts it to the side, walks out, and tells the kids to put their geese on because they're going to start the lesson. But the kids are all confused because Kreese told them that they were planning on going to the woods that day, a place called Coyote Creek, to do a special secret training thing. And when Johnny finds out it's Coyote Creek, he tells Kreese, I don't think they're ready for that. But once the kids hear that, they start telling Johnny that they are ready. And Johnny's feeling the peer pressure, so he agrees. Cobra Kai heads to Coyote Creek, and everybody is divvied up into teams, red versus black. They're all wearing headbands with their team's color on it, and the whole goal is to grab the other person's headband. And the team to grab all the headbands is going to win. But Kreese is a little overdramatic, telling the kids that the headband is their life and there are no rules to this. Get a headband at all costs. Johnny, however, reminds the kids, this is simply a training mission, that's it. Now, Miguel and Tori are on the same team, and they're walking through the woods together when they come across one of the guys from the other team. And they toy with this poor guy. But after Tori gets his headband, Miguel ends up, quote-unquote, finishing him. And Johnny sees this from afar, and he is not a fan. Now, Eli, meanwhile, is on the other team. And Miguel sees him grab a headband, but then he also sees Eli start bragging about the fact that he has five, quote, kills. And I guess that's why he has a Medal of Honor alerting Miguel to the fact that it was Eli who trashed Miyagi-Do. And it ends up coming down to Miguel versus Eli. Eli walks up to him saying, all right, finally a worthy opponent. But to his surprise, Miguel isn't very playful, pissed off about the fact that Eli is the one who trashed Miyagi-Do. But Eli tells him, well, they're the enemy. I had to put them in their place. And Miguel can't believe what he's hearing, telling Eli they're not the enemy. That's stupid. Now, Eli thinks this is all about Sam, but it's not. And he tells Miguel, well, if you want the Medal of Honor so bad, come and take it. And that's exactly what Miguel does. And when Miguel claims victory, Kreese yells, finish him. So Miguel does that. But Johnny walks up to him afterwards and says, what the hell was that? I didn't teach you that. Is that really how you want to live your life? And then he walks away disgusted. So now Johnny has an issue with Kreese. And when they get back to the dojo, Johnny asks Kreese, what have you been filling my kids' heads with? And Kreese explains that it's the same stuff that he taught Johnny back in the day. But Johnny tells him that didn't work then and it doesn't work now. Cobra Kai is always going to be badass, but there's a huge difference between no mercy and no honor. Kreese starts trying to justify himself, but at the same time, rile Johnny up. And it gets to the point where Johnny just cuts him off and says, you know what? This isn't working out. I thought it would, but it's not. And he kicks Kreese out of the dojo, forcing him to leave, and Kreese reluctantly does. Now over with Miyagi-Do, Daniel's gotten an early start to the day, but he gets a phone call from Amanda who once again woke up in a bed that was empty. He tells her that he got an early start to the day and tried to get an early start in the lesson, but she reminds him that they have a meeting that day with Anush. He reassures Amanda that he's going to be there and quickly gets off the phone because he hears something outside. And to his surprise, it's not anybody from Miyagi-Do, it's actually Kreese. Now, it's worth mentioning that this interaction did happen before Kreese's trip to Coyote Creek and before Kreese got kicked out of Cobra Kai. But the visit to Miyagi-Do was really a warning shot from Kreese to Daniel. That what happened back then isn't going to happen again, and all of us kids are going to be ready, and this is war, and yeah, the same douchebag rhetoric from Kreese. It's really just a tactic to try to intimidate Daniel. Now, while this is going on, Sam had linked back up with Moon. And Sam wants Moon to help her pick out an outfit, but Moon can't figure out why because it's just workout clothes. And then she figures out, oh my god, you have a crush, and it's gotta be Robbie. And Sam kind of admits to having a crush on him, but also tells her that nothing's happened yet. So with that information, Moon does help her pick out an outfit, but... It's extremely hot that day. And none of the kids really want to train because it's so hot. They're all whining. And the training method that day is one person standing in a circle. Everybody has a number. Daniel yells at the number. That person goes in to attack the person in the center of the circle. But they're all struggling with it. So Daniel decides to flip the script and put them in a freezer. He tells them that the muscles twitching from the cold and the fact that you can see your opponent's breath, that'll all help you. But as he's in the middle of this lesson, he gets a phone call from Anush. And he sends the phone call straight to voicemail. And Anush is sitting there with Amanda wondering where Daniel is, visibly annoyed. And because his phone call went straight to voicemail, he figures that Daniel isn't coming and he walks out. And Amanda frantically calls Daniel, but he's not answering because he's too busy with this lesson. Now, the good thing about the lesson is he was able to help Dimitri defend himself. The bad thing about the lesson is once he's done with it, he sees a bunch of missed calls from Amanda and he knows that he screwed up. So he frantically heads to the dealership to make up with Anush, but he finds that Anush is gone. And Amanda tells him, yeah, he left. And Daniel thinks that he just left for the day, but she explains, no, Daniel, he left. He got a better offer from Tom Cole, and he was willing to let you match it, but you blew him off once again. You've been an absentee owner, neglecting this place while you've been off at karate camp. And Amanda isn't wrong, and Amanda's very sick of it. 
But back at the house with Sam's parents, both at the dealership, arguing about Daniel's ownership strategy, Sam and Robbie finally hook up. And shortly after that happens, there's a knock at the door, and Robbie yells for Sam to get it, but she's upstairs, so Robbie answers the door, and to his surprise, it's Miguel. Miguel is returning the Medal of Honor and explains to Robbie that he wasn't the one who trashed Miyagi-Do. He was just returning the Medal of Honor. They're not all douchebags. But when Sam comes downstairs after Robbie closed the door and asks who was at the door, instead of telling her the truth, Robbie says, oh, it was nobody. They just had the wrong house and puts the Medal of Honor in his pocket. Thank you so much for watching this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video if you liked it. Hit thumbs down if you thought it sucked. If you don't see the next video up in the end screen, don't worry, it'll be up soon. And please be nice in the comments section. Nobody likes being told they suck, even if it's true. Oh, and you know, sharing's caring.